Good day chaps. So today's quick video is going to be on a very rare vehicle. It's the Cast Cavalier and also part of a new series which is going to aim to be a bit more bite sized in the way of videos. These will be due to either there being insufficient data available in the archives, whether lost over time or just a smaller project in whole. These new videos will have a little clock symbol in the thumbnail for quick reference. So anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at our vehicle, the Cast Cavalier. This vehicle was built in 1943 to determine whether a cast visor plate that was riveted and bolted to a Cavalier hull offered adequate immunity when under armor-piercing attack and see how the joints held up under focused high explosive hits and would it produce a battle-worthy structure. This had been built after some disappointing but not unexpected results found in tanks of a riveted nature, both in home tests and in combat, particularly when struck by high explosive rounds. And this left the plate loose, which meant that essentially your tank's armour was more or less literally hanging on by a thread. As we covered some time ago, the British, like many nations at the outset of the war, relied heavily on using a laminate type of armour for protection. This involved using a carbon hardened steel, often baked over bone charcoal such as Vickers plate, to break up monoblock armour piercing rounds, as an outside layer mounted to a softer machinable quality inner steel plate. The problem was, while you can weld these together, it's difficult, it takes a lot of time and expertise and technique and doesn't always work, while at the same time the harder plate can't be cut or drilled once hardened and so it was holed before heating, then riveted on afterwards. This provided a good layer of protection, a harder outer layer that would break up armor piercing rounds, while the soft inner layer absorbed the shock and prevented spool. As the war progressed however, the size of the incoming rounds got larger, and in the case of high explosive rounds, came with more filler. And so the armor needed to be increased to counter this, which becomes problematic as the size of the bolts attaching the two plates had to increase as well to prevent the bolt neck snapping and these scale in a linear rate compared to the armour growth which led to the 2 inch wide ballistic bolts seen on things like Cromwell turrets anything bigger than this starts to become impractical on a tank thus something had to be done and the British tank manufacturers and experimental research departments were not sitting idly by on their hands they set to carrying out a lot of tests with different ideas and solutions to problems. However, one must bear in mind that any solution would need to offer a significant advantage to justify a switch or changeover in wartime production. This vehicle was one such test. It was a cast armoured cavalier. The casting was made by the Vulcan foundries to a specified drawing and bolted and riveted to a cavalier hull provided by Nuffield. And while fitted with a visor door, it was not given a machine gun port at this time. The first volley of rounds were 6 pounder armour piercing, fired at the expected ballistic limit of the armour. Now this has been known to confuse people before. Why test the armour against things like 6 pounder and 2 pounder, and not the 88mm for example? Well the answer is fairly simple, in that you know that guns like the 88 will perforate the armour, and so you don't actually gain any real data from it, and just confirm what you already know. And just upping the tank's armour to the point it can stop the aforementioned gun is not a solution either. So instead you try to use a round of similar size and velocity as it will likely face in a more common scenario with a 50-50 chance of perforation. In this case the cast armour held up well with the first rounds loosening a few bolts only but the armour held although round 4 of the 6 pound ammunition caused the split in the near side angle bracket securing the casting to the main armour. Rounds 5-7 to seven were shot into the cast parts which still held up although more bolts were found to have been loosened, although not sheared away. However, round 8 was a 25 pounder high explosive round at full service charge. When this struck on the machine gun blanking plate, it failed to damage the armour, however the seal between the cast and the nose lost 20 bolt heads sheared off, and a visible gap was formed between the casting edge and the hull side, while on the inside, 7 bolts and 2 rivets were sheared off, and the casting attachment to the inner bulkhead was bent. The next volley of rounds were sent into the left side as facing the tank. These were a mixture of armour piercing and high explosive rounds. The driver's visor was struck and held up well, while attempts to break the driver's door hinges failed, as the cast was designed to overlap and offer protection from this. However, more bolts were sprung from the plate, while the 25 pounder round 
blew out the rivets and bolts along the entire nose side. The testing stopped after some 25 rounds in total. The conclusion was that the cast armour section held up very well and was able to resist both 6 and 25 pounder at the limits imposed. However, it also proved that the riveting was completely inadequate and that a cast to roll to modernist armour combination would not work very well with rivets. This information was then passed in the feedback to let the tank designers know this type of thing. Well guys, I hope you like this short video on the subject. I'll try and get more out as I can. And there are a lot of subjects that are quite fascinating, or at least to me, but really don't have a great deal of visual material. If you did like this, let me know by giving the vid a sub so that I can go and fetch more stuff for you. And until next time, toodle pip.